Good evening, my friends. You are very welcome along to today's show. I am going to do what I always do, which is take you through the latest story surrounding Liverpool Football Club, ask you guys for your opinions in the comment section, drop a like on the video, and of course, hit that subscribe button. So look, let's start off with a bit of good news. The Standard Chartered Player of the Month for April has been awarded, and it has gone to a very deserving Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think you'll all agree with me, it's been a brilliant turn in fortunes for Trent since the managers moved him into this new dual position of both a midfielder and a right back. I love it. I'm glad that he's won the standard chart of player of the month. So congratulations to Trent on that. I think you'll all agree with me. A very, very deserving winner. So now we move on to Liverpool's search for a potential backup goalkeeper. There has been a name doing the rounds for the past couple of days. But this article today, or this piece from LFC Transfer Room, that where they quote David Lynch, uh, gives a little insight into why Liverpool's thinking could be this way. So I'm going to tell you where Cuevin Kelleher may end up in a couple of minutes' time. But before we focus on that, let's have a look at who could be coming in to replace him. So apparently Liverpool are considering a home a move for Robert Ron Robert Ziegler this summer. His homegrown status because of his uh, spell at Manchester United, is understood to be part of the appeal for Liverpool in bringing him in. So that's that's great. I'd seen this lad's name linked, but I hadn't seen the homegrown part brought up until uh, David Lynch brought it up here. So good, that works for me. If we can get in a homegrown player that we don't have to go and spend a whole lot of money on, that we uh, can go out there and maybe get in midfielders that aren't homegrown that are probably a better fit, I'm all for it. So again, Ron Robert Ziegler is the goalkeeper's name. He's, uh, yeah, Liverpool been linked to bringing him in as a backup for Alison Becker. So again, maybe you've seen more of this dude than I have. Hanover 96, I believe, is where he plays his uh, football. So let me know what you know about him. And again, Works for me if it's homegrown because it has that box ticked and we do love to tick the homegrown box. Right, now we move on to the title of this video and what it's really about. Uh, we know Liverpool are in for Manuel Ugarte. We know that it's going to cost €60 million Euro if we are to trigger his release clause in his contract. We've seen reports coming out of Portugal from Sport and others that suggest Liverpool are in negotiations for the player. But today it comes from Jacques Talbot and he said that it's understood that Aston Villa are locked in talks with Sporting over the possible deal for Manuel Ugarte. So there you go. Maybe we have some, some competition for his signature. Do keep an eye on this situation. Of course, we will keep you as up to date as we can on it when we find out anything new. Of course, we'll bring it straight to you. But I hope this is um, I hope this is the start of a period where we really start to see Liverpool's midfield for next season being shaped. We know about the stuff doing the rounds about Alexis McAllister. That's looking really positive. We also know about Liverpool being told, or us as Liverpool fans being told by Neil Jones, to keep an eye on Nicolo Barella and Liverpool's interest there. He was a very big part of Inter Milan's 2-0 victory over AC Milan last night. Played really well, was involved in the first goal. Uh, and is a player that would have absolutely no issues with Liverpool signing. If you brought me in him, McAllister and Ugarte, that's a pretty successful transfer window in my eyes. But we do have competition for a Garthay signature, Aston Villa. So you may be saying to yourself, really, Craig, Aston Villa is that much competition? Well, their owners will spend. Unai Emery is a good coach and Aston Villa are a historically big club. Now, I think if the opportunity was presented to the player, Liverpool would probably be his preference. But we are only as good as the bid that we put forward to Sporting Lisbon. So definitely one to keep an eye on. Um. And my, my answer to all this is always the same. I want who Klopp wants. So if Klopp wants to get targets one, two, and three, I think it's on the board, it's on the recruitment team to go out there and get numbers one, two, and three. I like to think Manuel Agarte is at the very top of Klopp's thinking, but we wait and see. So do keep an eye on it. So us and Aston Villa both interested in Sporting Lisbon's Manuel Ugarte, 22 years of age, Uruguayan international, and again with a 60 million euro bio clause in his contract. Right, I want to move you on to the Creevian Kelleher situation that I alluded to a little bit earlier in the video. So Liverpool are starting to look around for reinforcements for the backup keeper position. By the grace of God, Adrian Samaghel is going to be leaving us this summer. Um, and we need to bring in somebody. So we spoke about that, but now we have to speak about the possibility of where Cuevin Kelleher may go. Now, I've told you guys that from what I've been reading, it looks like Brentford, um, Brentford, who's the other one? Brentford, Brighton, and there was another club who I can't think of off the top of my head, another Premier League club who are being linked. But 
There is a piece doing the rounds today that said Brentford have identified Grieving Kelleher as one of the three potential goalkeeper targets as they plan for life after David Rea. Kelleher is ready to become a number one elsewhere, but still has three years left on his Liverpool deal. I think Spurs may be the third club now that I think about it. So look, Liverpool are in a good position here. They won't stand in Creeping Kelleher's way if he wants to go on and progress his career. I'm sure they'd be understanding that he wants to be a number one. I think he's good enough to be a number one. And a club like Brentford or Brighton um, or even Spurs when Hugo Lloris moves on could be a good destination for him. The fact that he still has three years left on his Liverpool contract puts us, I guess, in a good negotiating position. The number that I've seen mentioned that Liverpool are going to ask for Cuevin Kelleher is about £20 million. So whether you think that's fair or not, that is seemingly the number. I think it is fair and all, honestly. But I would like to see Liverpool try and exercise a buyback clause in any deal to sell Cuevin Kelleher. Could be because I'm biased that he's Irish, but it's also because I've never had any worries when he stepped in between the sticks. I think he's always done a good enough job. So again, I want to know what you guys think on it. Uh, Bruno Gomares has been linked to Liverpool Football Club and I have to say this is in my opinion poo poo of the highest order they're talking about would be willing to go up to 100 million euro to sign him but my information is that he's about to sign a new deal at Newcastle that's what I've I've been briefed to uh, tell me about Bruno Gomares and look when I say I've been briefed not coming from a journalist coming from a friend within the industry um, so wait and see what happens there I don't think there's any truth to this. I don't think he will want to leave Newcastle. He's idolised up there by the Geordies and seems very comfortable. The fact that they'll probably have Champions League football next season as well and probably for the foreseeable if Newcastle continue their uh, move up the football pyramid like they have, let's wait and see. But I don't think there's anything to this one. I think it's absolute nonsense. And again, it comes from Spain. So why would... Why would a Spanish paper have the, the inside scoop on Bruno Gamarish going from one Premier League club to another? So I'm calling poo-poo on this one. I think it belongs on Bullshit Island. Um, there's a piece from Maurizio Romano that said apparently Real Madrid's proposal has now been accepted by Jude Bellingham. And this could well be the case. As I said to you guys 10 days ago now, I don't think it was. Uh, it was all agreed when... It was starting to be brief that it was. Now maybe things are moving a bit further along. They go on to speak about, or for Britsher goes on to speak of the fact that uh, Real Madrid and Dortmund will probably get together later this month and try and hash out a deal there for him. So last thing I wanted to speak to you guys about is something that leads on from a video that you may have seen on the Anfield Agenda account about Redbird Capital and about the fact that they're... Uh, they have taken on $750 million in investment from Sheikh Man a Sheikh Mansur-owned company, IMI, I think, if my memory is correct. But I read something else today that kind of made me feel even more grubbier about the situation. So this is on Sky Sports, if anybody wants to have a read of it for themselves. It says, Investor in Liverpool owners and talks to buy PSG stake. US private equity fund uh, Arctos Sports partners are in talks about buying a stake in PSG. A deal is some months away, but talks are progressing. Uh, Arctos, Arctos, excuse me, are investors in Liverpool owners FSG's group. There's a lot of muddied waters here, right? So this same crowd that are looking to go in and buy a bit of Paris Saint-Germain are also potentially invested in Liverpool's ownership group of FSG. Add to that the Sheikh Mansour money and Redbird. And it all, look, it's, I'm sure it's legal. I'm sure it's absolutely all above board. But it feels a bit grubby to me that the, the waters have been muddied a little bit here with a bit of cross-pollination of, of ownership groups. Uh, and I don't like it. But I just wanted to bring it to you guys again just to see what you guys think of it. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if, uh, if I'm just deluded and just this means nothing. But to me... I don't know. I, I'm glad that these things are being exposed. I'm glad that we're at least finding out this information, but yeah, it still doesn't sit right with me. But that is it for me today, my friends. Uh, we'll have one more video probably over the next couple of days. I'm going to take a couple of days off because I'm mentally just exhausted, to be honest. So I'll catch up with you guys on Sunday for any live stuff as well. I appreciate your feedback as always. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. The preview for the game on Monday against Leicester will be out in the next couple of days. So yeah. Again, have yourselves a good one. Much love from me and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.